machine a better quality pocket, what you need to do is machine from the inside of the pocket to the outside of the pocket. Let me show you how to do that on a Mazak control. Hi, I'm Mike Zilich, part of the HEH group. Um, today on the Mazak Minute, we're going to be cover, covering pocket milling. Um, pocket milling over the years, I've seen in classes that uh, there's some parameters that can be uh, easily changed to make a more optimum cut path for you. Um, so let's get started. Going to go down to my uh, Mazak Smooth G Control. What we're going to do is look at a Smooth G program, a Mazatrol program. In that program, what we have here is a pocket milling operation. And what I'm gonna show here is a couple of things that I don't like to see. Um, starting if I go to the tool path, the number one item I see is that as we do a path step, what you're gonna no notice is that the tool starts on the outside of the tool path, working towards the center. That can be easily taken care of by a simple parameter, E92 bit zero. We're gonna set that from a one to a zero. So if I come over here, we're gonna to go to uh, parameters. And I'm gonna go over here to the E92. And that last bit right now, if you see it, how it's highlighted in green on bit zero, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that one off. So now if you look at E92, you see that very last bit to the right, it's now a zero. I'm gonna go back to my program. And I am going to do my auto approach. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna hit auto set so it recalculates where it's gonna be starting the tool path at. Go back to the tool path. Part shape. And now when I do a path step, what you're gonna notice is it starts right in the center of the part, working its way out. That's gonna give you a much better tool path. A lot of times what you're trying to hold size on is the outside of the pocket, and I don't wanna be roughing the tool path at that point. The other things we are gonna take a look at, if I come across here, you're gonna see that there is a bottom and a wall. If I set those to a three, that's only gonna do that with one roughing tool. If you go choose four through nine, that's gonna give you a roughing tool and a finish tool. And a four is gonna be something in the neighborhood of a 125 micro finish. Um, the higher the number, the finer the finish. As you go higher in the number, you're gonna see your finish Z and finish R are gonna be uh, a smaller number as it gets higher. Interference R and chamfer. If you don't want to have a chamfer at the top of the pocket, you can leave those blank. Um, if you're chain, or chamfering right at the top of the pocket, what that interference R is looking for is a distance to like where a clamp or the next step would be. If it's wide open, the largest number I can put in there is 9.99. Coming down back down here to the approach points, Again, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna put in auto sets for that question mark. When you come over here to the type, I can give it clockwise, counterclockwise. So it really doesn't matter as far as when you create the figure pattern, Mazak will look at this to give you the cutting direction. The next item, ZFD, stands for the axial Z feed rate. Um, if you look down here at the uh, soft keys, you're gonna see a G01 cut, G0 rapid, but uh, for the most part, people really don't notice if you look at the prompt box down there, notice how it says multiplier. So if you're just doing a straight plunge, what I can actually do is I can come in here and I can type in 0.5, hit enter, and you notice how it gives you a 0.5 and what that's gonna do is it's gonna feed down at half the feed rate of what's giving over to the right in the, as the feed rate. Um, once it gets down to depth, 
it will then go ahead and go at the normal feed rate over on the right hand side. Um, some people, sometimes if you're close to an edge and you don't want to, uh, if you want to cut maybe a little faster, you can take that number and I can take it as high as 9.9. .9. Most people won't go that high. They're normally go maybe two times or three times fast. But the default from the factory is gonna be that G01, and most people stay with that, and you're adding cycle time because you could actually be increasing your feed rate to get down to the pocket quicker. Next topic what we have, which we're gonna be changing a few parameters on, is the type of entrance into the pocket. You're gonna see down below on the soft keys, we have standard, taper, helical, and pecking. The standard, if I switch it over here, let's go back and do a quick tool path just to show, I can show you what's lo how it looks like. Program, tool path, part shape, and if I do a path step, notice how it does a straight feed cut all the way down to the bottom and then starts cutting over. That used to be on our older controls what we could do. The new version, what we can do with the, uh, I believe the matrix control and the smooth control is I can come in here to the program and I'm gonna come over here to the type of cut. Now notice when I did hit standard, it will leave that type window blank. I'm gonna come over here to taper and now when I go to do a tool path, and let's change one thing. You're good, let's I guess start over here. I'm clicking too fast. Let's come back here. We're gonna go back to program. What I'd like to do is I forgot to change my auto approach. So I'm gonna come back here and do the auto approach. Now when I go to do my tool path, program, tool path, part shape. Notice how down here, you're getting a motion going back and forth. And if I switch that over to, let's go to a side view so I could get a better shot of it. Notice, I guess to, on the side of the screens on the smooth G control, you hit that orange icon and that's gonna bring up some uh, plane changes. What I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna switch over to my YZ plane part shape, and now if I do the path step, and it's doing it in the wrong direction for me, so let's switch to a different plane. We're gonna to go to the XZ plane program, tool, tool path, part shape. So here finally I'm getting what I'm looking for. If you notice right here, you see that zigzag, that is going at a very steep angle. Um, a lot of times the tool path, the tool or the cutting tool, would probably uh, build up with uh, some material. There's not enough relief for the, uh, for the chips to get out of. So what we're gonna do to fix that is we're gonna come back here. I'm gonna go to my parameters. And what we're gonna be looking here is gonna be E34, E35. What we have here, this is for the taper angle. Settings that I've run up in the back or in the past is going to be that I'm gonna change that to from 200, we're gonna to go to four. 
And oop, I put a decimal point in there. Let's make that four, enter. And then E34, we're gonna go from 10 to 50. So now when we go to do our program, program edit, we're gonna come back here, we're gonna reset our approach points. Now that we changed the E34 and E35 parameter, let's take a look at uh, the toolpath. So if I come back out to my toolpath, we'll do a part shape. And if I do a path step, I'll try and go a little slow here. Notice how the tool is ramping over. So if I go back and forth, you're getting a nice ramp angle. So the settings that I just changed, I'm gonna minimize my control and I'm gonna bring up my uh, notes that I have on this. Uh, the first one that we did earlier, E92, we had changed bit zero from a one to a zero. And now what we're doing is we're doing a taper and the taper is gonna be down a few pages and that's going to be right here. And that basically, E34 is going to be the distance, the percentage of the tool going the distance for the approach back and forth. The formula right down below here, approach distance is equal to the nominal diameter of the tool times E34 divided by 100. So let's do a cliff notes of that. Let's say that it's the percentage of the diameter of the tool. So in E34, I'm going from 10 to 50. So I'm making that ramp 50% long, okay? As far as the distance. Next, you come down to E35. Uh, from the programming manual, what they show here is that the Z-axis axial cut depth is the approach distance, which we just calculated out with E34, times E35 divided by 100. So again, every time I look at dividing by 100, I always think of percentage. So if I look at E35, they give me a nice formula here. One on E35 will be approximately 0.57 degrees. So a lot of times, a lot of cutting tool manufacturers, solid carbide uh, tools will go anywhere from two to five degrees. So if I take that 0.57, I know that if I go, let's say four, that's just gonna be over two, two and a quarter degrees. So you can see down here, the factory settings that uh, were set, it was set at 200. And it, that's actually like a 114 degree ramp in. That's how we saw that excessive ramp. I'm changing it to a four and the number is 2.28. So let's go ahead and make those few changes and let's take a look at the tool path. We're gonna come back here to my smooth cam. We're gonna go back to pro or parameters. Go to my E parameters, and here we're gonna change, I think I already changed it, didn't I? We're gonna go to E10, or excuse me, E34. E34 was set to a 50, and yes, I did set them correctly. 50 and four. That gave me again, program, toolpath, That gave me that nice ramp into the pocket and then it mills itself around. So now what we're gonna do is let's talk about a helical entry. If we go to the program, we're gonna come over here. We're gonna put some auto sets back in the program. And now I'm gonna come over and change this taper we're gonna come over, we're gonna make it helical. Again, I have the factory settings in the parameters right now. If I go to program, toolpath, part shape, and I do a pass step, notice the arc in is again, very excessive. 
okay? That's going to be uh, having buildup in the tool. You're going to chip probably the uh, inside the cusp of the cutter. What we're going to do is we're going to change a few parameters. And we are going to go to E32. We're going to take that from a 5 to a 40. So I'm going to make that radius of the cutter, the approach to 40% of the tool. And then E33, we're going to go from that 200, and I'm going to make that to that 4. Again, that 2.28 degree ramp in. Come back to program. We're going to reset our approach points. And do a tool path, part shape, path step. Notice how we have a lot bigger arc in, a lot smoother of a cut. The tool is going to be able to cut, get down to the pocket, and machine the pocket. Just remember again that from there, you do have the possibility of that Z feed rate. I can make that approach on that helical faster or slower. So if I wanted to go faster, I could again come back here, make that two times, and that would reduce some of your cycle time as far as that approach. I'm going to double the feed rate on the arc in. Thanks for joining me today on the Mazak Minute. I hope you got some helpful tips. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.